Hey guys, it's Leifi, this time with 20 tips for Albion Online that will help you with your progress and improve your personal economy. Being a new player to any game can be overwhelming, even more so in Albion Online where the game is full loot and it's a huge open world where everyone can kill each other. In Albion Online you literally play on the same battleground as those that have been playing for years already, and this puts you under a lot of pressure. This video has a lot of information to help you with the initial struggles of being a newer or returning player. I believe that if you watch this video once, you won't have to worry about your sense for progress and in-game economy ever again. This video is a combination of both practical tips and tips to improve your mindset. There is a term we used a lot in our old guild which was called personal economy. It's the system that surrounds you and determines the level of value you have and how it translates to your game experience. Your goal is to improve your personal economy so that you gain more value and have more qualitative experiences. In Albion Online personal economy consists of the entirety of things that have value to you. This might be the silver, gold or other resources you have, your personal island or maybe even islands, all the rare mounts and skins you own or your collection of furniture items. I'm pretty guilty of that last one myself. However, I don't think personal economy is limited to silver and items alone. Other things that have value form your personal economy as well. This could be all the friends and relationships you have in Albion Online, your guild and alliance, the goals you guys have together, and all the experiences that take place, which really are unique to you. Therefore, I think personal economy is something that will change from person to person, as everyone is unique in who they are, what they enjoy, as well as everything else that surrounds them. The game has a lot to offer, and with that various ways to progress, make silver and sustain yourself. I really think it's important you do what you feel like at any given moment, so that you enjoy your time. It's why I won't go into the silver making details of personal islands in this video, as it was part of why I burned out before. And with that comes tip number one. There will be times you feel like min-maxing, and those are the times you should do it, but if you think about maximum profits for each activity you do, and every item you get, you put yourself under a lot of unnecessary obligations, and most likely start doing things you don't even want to. Let's say you have farmed all day and you have an entire bank full of items in Dimhurst. You obviously want the highest prices for your items, and because of that you spend the next two hours going from city to city to check the prices. You do this once, it's fun, you do this twice, it's still fun, but the third time you start feeling like it's a chore already. Before you know you are doing this on a daily basis, and it just starts taking away from your game experience, little by little, every day. So what is it I suggest you do instead? Just sell the stuff in the city the loot is in. Those two hours you save with this, you can do something like dungeons instead, and progress both in silver and fame, and probably gain much more overall value. Once again, the keyword is value. You should do things that bring value to you and you enjoy doing. Doing dungeons in those two hours could be a much more fun activity. It turns you fame and silver, you might get to play with others, have some PvP encounters, and maybe even get some new high value drops. Dungeons of course is only an example, as there are a ton of activities you can choose from. And maybe some days you actually feel like going from town to town for two hours, and those are the days you should definitely do it. I have nothing against this activity, it actually is one of the ways to make silver in Albion Online. I will cover this later in this video. However, if you think about maximizing profits all the time, you simply won't progress as efficiently in Albion Online. There is silver currency, gold currency and a third one that is even more valuable than these two, which is the fame currency. Yes, unlike silver and gold, you can't trade your character's fame with others. Nonetheless, fame is the most valuable currency you have in Albion Online. There is a reason why advanced players keep spending millions on tomes. So, what is it that makes fame so great? When you max out the mastery, all equipment within that mastery gets 20 bonus item power. Within different masteries, you have specializations. These take longer to level, but when maxed out provide even greater bonuses. To save you the headache, all bonuses together add up for a total of 298 bonus item power, which is equal to 3 tiers in equipment, meaning flat tier 5 equipment gets the same item power as flat tier 8 equipment when a tree is maxed out. And this is why advanced players spend millions on tomes, it's so that they don't have to keep spending millions on gear. Unfortunately, a lot of beginners don't see how valuable fame really is, and how much it means for their overall progress. Instead, they keep spending millions on gear to compensate, and this only hurts their personal economy even more. Yes, I just told you advanced players spend millions on tomes and that fame is valuable. However, as a beginner, you don't have the luxury to use all the tomes you get. One tome costs 30k silver and provides 10k fame to all equipment you wear. However, killing a handful of mobs which can be done in literally 20 seconds also grants you 10k fame. Now, as a beginner, can you make 30k silver in 20 seconds? I don't think so. 
A lot of beginners feel like their gear is not good enough and set higher gears as one of their primary goals. And even buy gear and die in gear they can't afford to lose. I can tell you based on my own experience that gear used in general gameplay is 6.1 for normal items and 4.2 for artifact items. In my solo dungeons guide you can see I wear nothing above 6.1 and I farm tier 8 solo dungeons with that gear. My masteries for those gears aren't even that great. My artifact swords level is only at 59 and all other swords are at level 1. This is probably one of the things that hurt beginners personal economy most, as they feel they have to compensate for being new to the game. You won't improve your personal economy with this mentality. There is nothing you have to make up for. All you have to do is understand you are at a different stage within the game. You are not competing with the 130,000 daily active players. Your goal is to improve your personal economy and for this you have to set your ego aside. I've seen prices not make sense many times. 6.1 equipment has the same item power as 5.2 and 4.3, yet the prices between these three change drastically. It changes from item to item which of the tiers and enchantments is more expensive. I highly suggest you take the extra couple seconds to compare prices of different tiers and enchantment levels when buying your gear. When doing this, take the quality of the items into account as well, as quality provides an additional fixed item power. Being patient and planning things beforehand saves a lot of silver in Albion Online. If you have decided what gear you want to use, for let's say dungeon farming or gathering, go ahead and put buy orders for a couple sets. This will net you your sets for less silver. However, if you need a set right away, don't be too greedy and set buy orders for those as well. It could take hours or even days for your buy orders to go through, and as we have already covered, you could be far more efficient in those hours. When I returned to Albion Online, the first thing I thought when I went to my island was, what was I even planning to do with all these items? I'm not kidding you, I had over 2000 different items of which many were full stacks. Hundreds of equipment I didn't even have a single level in. This is all silver lying around. Especially as a beginner, it's important to get rid of stuff. At this stage you most likely worry about your silver progress and monthly premium. I'm very sure that anyone watching this video with one month into the game has millions in items they are hoarding for no specific reason. And most likely they aren't even aware of it. The only items that are worth keeping are items you use or will use in the upcoming weeks. Items you bought with specific reasons such as investments or items that have personal value to you such as unique mounts or skins. And that's pretty much it. If having certain items increases your gameplay experience, you should definitely keep them. After all, this video is about improving your personal economy and your quality of game experience is part of that. As I said in tip number one, I would cover the differences in prices in different cities as it is a huge part of the Albion Online economy. Each city has its advantages and this makes for different economies in different cities. If you go to a city that provides extra return on plate helmet crafting, the plate helmets in that city's market will most likely be cheaper than the city on the other side of the royal continent. Each city is in a different landscape and is higher on specific resources, therefore specific materials will be much cheaper in specific cities. There really isn't a secret to this, you trade your time for profits by moving items around and that's basically it. This can be done safely over the blue zones, slightly more dangerous on the yellow zones and in the red and black zones the risks are very high. The higher the risk, the more the profit. This of course applies to crafting and refining as well. If you spend the extra time to go to specific cities to craft or refine items, you'll have better returns. And with that get items by using less resources, which translates to more silver gain. To add on tip 8, you can increase the rewards you gain by increasing your risks in various forms when playing Albion Online. One way would be to travel through more dangerous zones to flip items, such as going from one of the blue zone cities to the black market in Carleon. This is an activity a lot of people do and is a good way of making silver. However, if you are to die in the red zone, you'll lose everything you have. You can reduce the risk by going with the party and having designated scouts. A less known method you can pull off is having your gathering tool with you whenever you do other activities. The risk in this is that you will lose your tool on top of your gear if you are to die. But if you run into rare nodes such as point twos or point trees, this will make for extra valuable resources. A third one is to use better gear. Yes, I did say earlier not to overdo it with your gear, but at the end of the day better gear means faster clears. And time is money. You might be able to do one or two more solo dungeons in an hour because of your gear, which would make for additional items, silver and fame. And of course the trade-off is the cost of dying. Whenever you do an activity put some thought into what it is you're doing exactly, and how to be most efficient. If you're going for group dungeons, don't go in the set you do solo dungeons with. In group dungeons you have other people with you, and there are several items within the game that benefit those around you. One example is the royal jacket. This is an item used in a lot of group PvE content. 
The Royal Jacket has the Royal Banner skill, which modifies the cooldown by 50% and increases attack speed by 30% for you and up to 5 allies around you. This benefits the group a lot. So what if everyone in the group were to bring equipment that helps the party? The party would clear things so much faster. If you want to progress as efficiently as possible within your destiny board, choose a weapon tree and stick to it. Having different weapons within a mastery gives option in choice for different content. If you choose bow for example, the whispering bow might be good for solo dungeons, the longbow for medium scale pvp, the warbow for solo ganking, bow of baden for group pve, the wailing bow for zvz and the normal bow for hellgates. So you can simply change between bows based on content. However, some weapon trees aren't as flexible. The dagger for example has insane dps, but doesn't have a weapon that does aoe interrupt like the bow of baden for group pve play. And this is where the tip kicks in. If you wish to use daggers, stick to daggers, but change up your armor based on the content. You could use the Judicator Helmet for AoE Stun or the Judicator Boots for AoE Knock Up. This will provide the necessary utility for group play without you having to change weapons. When you want to buy enchanted items, most often it will be much cheaper to buy the flat item and the runes and enchanted items yourself. Aside from saving silver in personal use, this can also be used to make profit. People are lazy or simply can't be bothered with enchanting, and this can benefit you. When I used to do Hellgates, I would die very often, and I just wanted to buy my set and go out right away. Whilst I was very aware it would be cheaper to enchant my own items, I would still buy them pre-enchanted from the market. This might be an activity you enjoy doing from time to time for some profits. It's a safe way to make silver of those that can't be bothered with it. I suggest informing yourself about the current popular items such as what's being used in Hellgates, solo dungeons and ganking if you wish to use this method. When using the market for profits, don't forget taxes. With premium placing an order costs 1.5% of the item's price, and an additional 3% will be taken when the item is sold, for a total of 4.5%. Setting up a buy order also costs 1.5% of the price, which brings me to tip number 14. This is a personal rule I created ever since I returned to Albion Online. I simply don't want to worry too much about the financial decision making within the game. When it comes to buying or selling items, I simply allow the price to go 10% either way. This means I allow myself to buy items for a maximum of 10% more than what they are worth and when I sell items to list them for a maximum of 10% discount based on the market history. Of course there is a limit to which I apply this rule. It's fine with individual items or a handful of items, as I much rather get my PvE set for 600k and get going, than to waste my time getting it for 60k cheaper. Also when selling, I rather sell it on my first listing than to chase maximum profits and having to relist it multiple times. On top of costing time this also costs you additional listing taxes. However, if we talk about stacks of items or items of high value, things of course change, and chasing maximum profits is completely fine. In Albion Online there is a market history for every item, going back as much as 4 weeks. This is a very useful tool to learn what items are worth. It personally helps me not to worry when buying or selling something, as it gives me a clear idea of the item's value. I personally use the 7 days average as my indicator for prices, and apply the 10% rule of tip number 14 based on that. When something feels off I also check the 4 weeks history. I feel like the 24 hours average is not as reliable. The market history is also a very good tool to make profits. Sometimes a lot of people sell the same item on the same day and this causes insane price drops. You'll see this by looking at the 24 hour average in comparison to the 7 days and 4 weeks history. You could buy these items and sell them sometime later for some profits. You've probably heard or read before that Albion isn't a game meant to be played solo. And although the game offers solo options, there is a lot of wisdom to this. Joining a guild will give you access to people to play with, and more people to play with means access to more types of content. The more competitive the guild you join is, the more access you will have within the game. If you join a guild that's part of a big alliance, you'll most likely have a bunch of territories in the black zone as well as hideouts you can use. This will make progressing faster as the overall defenses will be much higher in those zones and you will get ganked less. I always think playing solo can be fun as well as solo content, but group play is where memories are created. Being part of a bigger goal will improve and broaden your personal economy in different ways. Every single guild will be different in their expectations, their people, guild culture and atmosphere, way of doing things and goals. Therefore being in the right environment is of utmost importance. Make sure to play the game in the guild that fits your wishes. So if you join a guild and find out it's not what you want or expected, don't waste another second. Your time is valuable just like you are and you deserve to make the most valuable connections, experiences and memories. I'm very strong about this feeling. The right environment is one of the most important factors for your game experience. To find a guild you can go to the Albion Online Discord, the Albion Online Forums or Reddit. 
One of the tips you'll often hear to improve your in-game economy is to create alts and buy premium on them as soon as possible, so that they get learning points and you can use their focus to refine, craft, gather on islands or whatever. It's not that this tip isn't true. It is true. It is a really good way of making silver, but I really feel like it's an overwhelming process for beginners. Based on this video alone you already have so much information you have to process and every extra thing you do will only overwhelm you and once again create additional obligations and with that additional pressure. I would suggest new players to first take some time to get fully comfortable within the game and to consider alts after. You'll also have a much better idea for what you want to do with your alts as you'll have a better understanding of the game. When you have premium you generate 10,000 focus points a day and it caps at 30,000, meaning every 3 days your focus points will be full. Focus points could fit in the list mentioned at tip number 2 where I say famous platinum, because focus points are yet another valuable resource in Albion Online. When you craft, refine or farm you can use your focus points to increase the resource return rate, meaning you create items for less materials. As you specialize more in a specific task it will cost you less focus to perform that action, meaning your focus will make you even more silver over time. And this is basically what alts are good for and how they generate silver. They exist and are good for multiple things. Personally I used to use them a lot but they became part of why I burned out before. I had 3 personal islands and 1 guild island to maintain. And I would build houses, have laborers in them, put a bunch of chests in every house to hoard all my items in, farm carrots and whatnot. Because the islands in this game are a good way of making silver, I felt like I had to do all the activities there continuously and basically had FOMO, which is fear of missing out. For newer players I would suggest to stick to one island only at first and build things up slowly. There are a lot of features to islands and they can definitely impact your personal economy positively. There are a bunch of guides on personal islands, I suggest you look up one of them. Within these guides they will most likely cover journals as well which is basically additional silver gain whenever doing activities. There is a lot to do in Albion Online and dedicating yourself to something really pays off in the long term. It be choosing a gathering or crafting profession, a fighting mastery to level, the way you build your island and all the laborers you level up there, or pretty much anything else that is considered an activity or skill. I highly suggest upon your initial start you take your time to discover what it is you enjoy doing. It's much better to spend the first couple of weeks on learning what you like than to invest a lot of time and resources from the get-go only to discover you don't like doing something after all. The fact is, although gathering is the same in theory for all gathering professions, in practice this still makes for playing the game in different zones. And maybe you don't want to gather in forest zones as the mobs there are super annoying. Or maybe you don't even enjoy gathering, but everyone told you to do so because it's good money. Perhaps buying materials and simply refining them for a profit is something you enjoy doing far more and fits your playstyle better. And the final bonus tip, join my discord server. My goal is to help people, it's what I create content for. I've always loved helping people improve, but I can't do this on my own. That's what my discord server is for. It's a place where together we create a community for people that want to have fun and improve, and also help others have fun and improve. And that's basically everything you have to know to improve your personal economy and get your progress going in Albion Online. I know this is a very long video with a lot of information, but as I said before, understanding these theories and practices will simply make you enjoy the game far more and be more efficient in the long run. If you enjoy this type of content for Albion Online and wish to be part of it, I hope to see you on my Discord server soon. For now I wish you good luck in your adventures.